So hopefully you've watched the video on the ambiguous case for law of sines. Remember that when we have side-side angle, we have that pair, that side and angle that are across from each other, that we can use for law of sines. However, we don't know how many triangles we have. And so the first thing we need to know is, how do I figure out how many triangles there are? And then once I know how many triangles, if they even exist, I need to solve for them after that. So that's what we're gonna look at in this video here. So I'm gonna start with these four examples, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just determine how many triangles are there. So I covered this in the last video, toward the end there, but I wanna show you an example here. So we're gonna look at the first one. I'm gonna draw myself a picture here with angle A, approximately 40 degrees. My picture might be off a little bit. And then remember next to angle A is side B, which is 16, and side A would connect to the end of side B here and come down over here on the right, but again, I don't really know where it goes. I don't know how many triangles I have. So before I worry about that, I'm going to assume I have a right triangle, and I'm gonna solve for X. Using angle A, which is 40, I have the opposite and the hypotenuse, so the sine of 40 equals opposite x over hypotenuse, 16. So 16 times the sine of 40 equals x. So x equals 10.3. x equals 10.3, and then I compare that to a. So if I compare these two, a is longer than x, and again, we should already have checked that A is less than B, right? It has to be shorter than B for this to make any sense. So it's shorter than 16, but longer than 10.3, so I'm gonna be able to draw two triangles here, okay? Two different triangles. And so that's what I have here, two triangles, okay? We're gonna come back to when I solve, how do I get both parts of, or all the parts of both triangles, but we'll come back to that. Right now, I just want to look at how many triangles are there, okay? So moving on to the next example. Angle A is 65 degrees. Side B is 15. First thing I want to do is compare A and B. A is greater than B. So it can't go in here, you know, down this way, because it'd have to be shorter to go to the left. If it's longer than 15, A is 18, then it has to kick out here to the right to make this triangle here. So since that is the case, I have only one triangle. Okay, remember we talked about that last time. The easy thing to do is just compare that. If A is longer than B, then it doesn't matter what makes it a right triangle. There's only one possible triangle to have. My next example, example three, angle A is 55. So again, I'm gonna just sketch myself a little picture here. Side B is 16, that goes up here. Okay. I'm gonna compare A and B. A is less than B, so I need to do my right triangle thing here. Label that X. And again, I'm going to use my ratio for sine opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of 55 equals x over 16. 16 times the sine of 55 equals x. So x is approximately equal to 13.1. So in order to make this a right triangle, the shortest distance that will connect the top of B right here to this line on the bottom is 13.1. Then I compare these two. Since A is less than X, this is not possible, okay? So not possible. Okay. If I have a length of six and a length of 16, then I can't have a 55 degree angle across from that length of six. Okay, it's just not possible. All right. And then we look at our last triangle here. If angle A is 100 degrees, so if I sketch that, that looks like this. And this brings me to a point that we didn't make in the last video, which is if A is obtuse. So notice all the examples we've had so far, A is an acute angle. What if A is obtuse? 
If A is obtuse, then a lot of what we've already talked about doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Because I can't make a right triangle here, right? I can't make a right triangle. There's nothing to compare it to. And so if I label what I have here, if B is 8, then the only thing I know is that if I'm going to connect this point here to this line down here, somewhere, anywhere down here, then that length is going to have to be longer than B, right? Because the distance from this point to this line here is B. In order to make a triangle where this line comes out here, A has to be longer than B. So if A is obtuse, and A is longer than B, then I have one triangle only, okay? If, on the other hand, A were to, angle A were to be obtuse, and side A were to be less than side B, then I would have no triangle possible, not possible. Okay, so that's kind of a side note for you, just so you know. Um, since we hadn't talked about what if angle A was obtuse, there's the note for you, okay? A little bit easier because we don't have the right triangle conundrum to worry about. So then let's go back to really the important part of this video, which is if I know how many triangles I have, now how do I solve for them? Now if I only have one triangle to solve for, like number two here, then we do exactly what we did in the last lesson, which was law of sines, okay? I have a triangle, my opposite angle and side I can use to set up a ratio. Sine 65 over 18 equals sine B over 15. And I can solve for angle B, subtract it from 180 to solve for angle C, use the ratio for angle C to find side C. Okay, We did that all before, so I'm not going to go over that. The question is, what if I have two triangles? Is it going to magically give me two numbers so that I know what both of my triangles are? And so that's what we're going to look at here next. So let's take this first example here and let's actually solve for those two triangles, okay? We already know that we have two triangles. We just did that. So I'm going to always start by sketching a picture of my two triangles. There's one of them and this is a really poorly drawn picture so let me try that again. And here's my other one, roughly. So 40 degrees for angle A. This is a bad picture, but that's okay. You can use your imagination. 16, 12, 16, 12. So that's everything I have and everything I know. And I'm going to label the parts I don't have. This was side B, 16. So this is going to be B, C, lowercase c, B, C on top, lowercase c. All right, those are the values I need. So I need to solve for angle B, angle C, and side C for both of these triangles. And so I'm going to have two different answers here. So we need to know how do we do that. So here's how we do that. It starts out the exact same as the other triangles. I'm going to set up the ratio sine 40 over 12 equals sine B over 16. And I'm going to solve for angle B. Now remember, my suggestion, just do this all on paper before you pick up your calculator. Okay? And so if I do that, I'm going to have 16 sine 40 equals 12 sine B. I realize my video just jumped around here. Let me try to fix that. There we go. Sorry about that. And then I'm going to divide by 12 to get rid of this 12 here. And then remember, if I need to get rid of sine, I'm going to do that inverse sine. We talked about that when we did our basic trig functions. So the inverse sine of all this stuff here, 16 sine 40 over 12 equals angle B. Now that's a lot, but you can stick that all in your calculator. Just be very careful with your parentheses if you don't have a very fancy calculator. Okay. So the inverse sine of 16 sine 40 
divided by 12, and I get angle B is 58.98, so I'm going to call it 59 degrees, okay, 59 degrees. Notice my calculator just gives me one answer. How do I know what to do with that one answer? Well, let's go back to our pictures. <clears throat> Here are my two pictures. If I look at my two pictures, and that's the reason I drew them, which one of those angles would be possibly be 59 degrees. So if I compare my angle B here and my angle B here, notice that this angle B on the left is acute and the one on the right is obtuse. So this has to be angle B in my first picture here. Okay, And that's the reason I draw the picture. Now, then the question is, how do I find angle B for the second picture? If it gives me one of them, how do I get the other one? And here's where we have to go back to what we talked about when we learned how these, this ambiguous case works to begin with. When I have that point, and I know it's not a right triangle here, I take that 12 and I put it here, and I put it here, right? 12 and 12. So in the middle of this picture here, I have an isosceles triangle with 12 on both sides, which means these angles are the same on the inside, isosceles triangle theorem. And that also means that this angle here is supplementary to the angle on the inside of the triangle. So this angle B here, my obtuse angle B, is supplementary to my acute angle B. So the note here is that angle B1, this will be B1 over here, is supplementary to angle B2. That will be the second one over here. So in order to find out the second one, I just need to do 180 minus 59. Okay. And that will give me the value for my second one. And this is always going to work out. 180 minus whatever you get for one angle B will give you the other angle B. In this case, 121 degrees. If your calculator gives you the obtuse angle, then you subtract it from 180 to get your acute angle. So it works the other way as well. Once you get that, then you have two separate triangles and you can solve each one for the parts that you need. Okay, I'm gonna erase this here just so I can give myself some room. All right. And I'm going to solve for angle C. So I'm going to take this value right here, 59 for angle B for my first one, and then I'm going to set up my ratio again, sine, oops, sorry, not sine. I'm going to find my angle C. I got to do that first. 180 minus 40 minus 59, okay. and that's going to give me 81. 81? Did I do my math right there? I did. Second guess myself. So this is 81 degrees for angle C. And then I can use that ratio with my ratio here from A. Sine 40 over 12 equals sine 81 over C. And I can solve that for C. I'll let you take a minute to do that. And then I'm going to use that same process over here for my second triangle. 180 minus 121 minus 40 is going to be 19. So this gives me a little tiny 19 degree angle here. And then I can use my ratio again. Sine 40 over 12 equals sine 19 over C. And I can solve that for C also. And so that, that'll give me both triangles and that will give me all of the parts of both of those triangles. Okay, I'll let you finish those out and get your values for C. And that is all that you have to do to solve for both triangles. So the big major point here is that the two angle B's are supplementary. Once you get one, subtract to get the other, solve for the rest of your parts. Okay? And that's how we do two triangles.